who's doing it to you? Right here you see removing roadblocks. How to make sustainable development happen now. Bank of America, Berkeley Law, UCLA Law, the American Bar Association. <coughs> Excuse me, doesn't that look good? Can't you just not wait to move into that? <laughs> On Common Ground, the National Association of Realtors, Smart Growth. The Lung Association, American Lung Association, advocates for smart growth. Heals, eating, healthy eating, active living. Have you seen this one in New Hampshire yet? Healthy eating, active living, you're fat, obesity. You're going to lose your kids pretty soon if you've got fat kids. You think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. It's an epidemic. You're contributing to that epidemic. What is healthy eating, active living? It's a program. It's all across the United States. You will see it here. It's about, sounds good. These things all sound good. Access to good food. Who wouldn't want that? What's the first thing on here? Update your general plan. Establish goals and policies in your general plan that address the built environment. Adopt zoning ordinances. This is about remaking your cities and counties to the smart growth model. Who else is working against you? The American Planning Association. These guys are all partners. Okay, the American Planning Association has just put out a 12-week long boot camp, a boot camp for planners. From November of 2011 to January of 2012, a 12-week long boot camp because of people like me. They brought in planners to re-educate them, to re-indoctrinate them, to propagandize them, to stop them from being intimidated and re-educated by us. What does it say in here? One of the things it says, key strategy, inoculate elected officials. This is for planners. Inoculate elected officials. Meet early and often. Keep them prepared. Cultivate influentials. Push back as necessary. American Planning Association, Virginia chapter of the annual conference. But the plan is on my website. It's right there from the American Planning Association. They are working against us. Planners say that if you want to have a good life, you will, what? You'll go along to get along with a plan. No, it ain't. OK, where else do you see it? In your university. Here we are, Southern New Hampshire University. I have not checked their curriculum, but I'm sure it is like Oregon State University, which has a class in geography, 300, sustainability for the common good, three credits, core course for the BA. University of Oregon, I was just in Oregon. Okay, here it is. It's a theme of inquiry for their center of law and politics. Wall Street to Main Street, capitalism and the common good. This theme will explore approaches to modifying the US capitalist system to make it more just, stable, and sustainable. Natural step. Have you seen that yet? The natural step approach. You're going to see that. Have you seen a thousand friends yet? A thousand friends. A thousand friends of what? A thousand friends of New Hampshire? Maybe. A thousand friends of Connecticut, Wisconsin, Florida, Oregon, and many other states. A thousand friends. These are nonprofit organizations that are funded by your government, corporations, and you. Now, one thing I want to tell you. Yes. Now, yes, there you go. You can get an, M an MBA in sustainability here. Now, check this out. One thing I didn't mention when I was talking about the Nazis, and I want to tell you this, is that Siemens Corporation is a German corporation. Now, during the not, during World War II, right before World War II, they were practically bankrupt until Hitler generously supplied them with slave labor from the concentration camps. Siemens Corporation. What do they do? They're in, into the smart grid. They make light rail and heavy rail. They push sustainability. They give sustainability grants. They are partners with us. Who else is a partner with us? 
Oh, by the way, they were also a funder of the American Planning Association's Growing Smart Legislative Guidebook for Planning and the Management of Change. Also, IBM. IBM was a partner, was trading with the enemy during World War II. What did they do? You remember? You remember the numbers? They did not, those numbers was, it wasn't like you're number one, you're number two, you're number three. Those numbers corresponded with the camps. People were tattooed to those numbers. They were monitoring and controlling through IBM's computers. The punch cards and the computers themselves were made by IBM. IBM actually was servicing, was servicing those machines from the United States. They created a wholly owned subsidiary, a German subsidiary in Germany. They just and they were, the last they were fully aware, yes, the American Community Survey is something you want to dump. Do not fill that American Community Survey out. That is the super census. That asks you when was the last time you had a baby, and how old is it, and were you married at the time, and when did you get married, by the way, and how much money do you make, and where do you live exactly, and how much is your mortgage, and how much is your energy cost, and how, what kind of car do you drive, the American Community Survey. IBM is now into biometrics. This is part of Agenda 21, inventory and control, inventory and controlling you. Check this one out. Have you heard of 23andMe? That's where you get your, you know, the human genome's been mapped, right? You don't own that, you don't own your own genes anymore. The human genome has been mapped and patented. And if you want to know if you have, you know, like something in your family, you spit in a cup and you send it off to 23andMe. This is a company that checks your, you know, will give, send you back a printout of what's your, you know, stuff. Well, they keep your data. Now, who is 23andMe? It's run by a woman named Anne Wojnicki or something like that. She's married to Sergey Brin. He owns Google. Yeah, Google. They own Google. They are monitoring and controlling you. This is what it's about. 23andMe, check it out. Biometrics, check it out. This is when you, you think you can just uh, keep using your ATM card. You weren't, you know, you'll be looking into something that will read your eye. You think you're going to need your passport? No. It's all going to be about reading your eye. Now, you know, this is all Agenda 21. I haven't gotten off of Agenda 21 for one second. The people who are doing this to you are lawyers, consultants, planners, big business. There's huge money in green. Siemens gives money to nonprofits. They give awards for sustainability. These groups are completely enmeshed. Your government, this is a seamless connection between your government, nonprofits, and corporations. This is a global corporatocracy. You will not read this in the newspaper because the newspapers and print, all media is owned by five corporations, except for your alternative media. Walmart's a partner. The unions are partners. AFL-CIO in 2001 at their conference, their huge convention, they denounce sprawl and they support smart growth. Why? Because most union members are in urban areas. Religion. You're going to find it in your church. If your pastor gives you a sermon on sustainable development, you better go have a chat with your pastor. Schools, universities, you're going to see it as mandatory volunteering. If you're paying, if you're, if you're volunteering and you are paying, uh, you know, charitable contributions, great. I'm sure you're people who are really, you know, want to do that. Take a look at who you're contributing to. Do they support this plan? Are they supporting smart growth? Are they part of this? This, you know, this is what it looks like. It is all around us right now. And you know, I don't blame you if you feel overwhelmed by this, because who doesn't, right? This is an assault. It's an attack on us. It is a bloodless coup. It's an administrative coup d'etat. And it is being implemented through regulations. And it's worldwide. And like I said, you're the resistance. This is what the resistance looks like. 
UN Agenda 21 is a global plan and it's implemented locally. And that is its strength, but it's also its weakness because we are local. We are local. So what are you going to do? You're going to educate yourself and others. You identify who the nonprofits are who are partnering with your government to control you. And you publicize it. You're going to use flyers. You're going to use whatever media you have access to. If you're paying dues to those groups, you're going to refuse to pay dues and you're going to let people know why. If you are a union member and your dues are being used, and they are, to support this plan, you will pay under protest and stand up in your union hall and tell them why. You want to educate as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. Withdraw your support and speak out. Those consultants who are taking millions and millions of dollars from all of our cities, states, counties need to be defunded immediately. Your planning department needs to be purged. You need to go to your planning department. There should be Nuremberg laws for planners. No more saying that if I don't do it, somebody else will. That went out about uh, 1945. No saying that uh, I'm just going along to get along. Or we're trying to help you work around the regulations. Oh no, those days are over. Get your local paper. Read it. I don't care if it's a rag. Of course it's a rag. They all are. <laughs> what you want to do is look in there. And you want to see neighborhood revitalization projects, neighborhood stabilization projects, sustainable projects, redevelopment projects. These are all Agenda 21. You want to go and stop them. You want to speak out in these meetings. I've got in my book, How to Anti-Delphi a Meeting. We've got a lot of videos on what to do, how to do it. This is a battle for the hearts and minds of our country. You need to know your enemy. So we've got flyers. These flyers are really powerful if you are in Iniquity City or County. We've got them. What you want to do is get up early and put them on, put them on doorsteps. You don't want to hand them out because people won't take them. And you don't want to talk with somebody because you're going to waste your whole Saturday. You want to get the information to people. That's what you want to do. You want to do things like this. Maybe th now, you may not be able to read it. What I want you to see is what it looks like generally. This is a powerful flyer. Notice, this property has been declared blighted by the city of Santa Rosa. This created a huge fear. It was true. Everything in here is true. And what we did was we used a flyer that looked official that we created ourselves to notify our fe fellow citizens of what our government was doing. And believe me, it blew the top off of our town. And you can do it too. Visuals. You want to make videos. Do a man on the street video. Do you know that Nashua is a member of ICLEI? Do you know what sustainable development is? What do you think about this? Five minute videos. You want to include young people. I'm glad to see some young people here. The younger, the better. We want young people are being indoctrinated. These are not bad people. These are people just like us. Some of them are us. What we want to do is help people understand what is going on, how to recognize it, and tell them that we are behind them, and we will support them when they stand up and say, no, I will not be a party to this. I will not do this. I am an American, and I will do absolutely nothing that infringes on the rights of my fellow Americans. And that is something that is really important to do. All of us need to do that. No matter what you're doing for a living, we need to support those people who are willing to stand up and say, I will no longer be able to continue in this profession. You want to kick Ickley out. You want to bring young people in, say, have them make those five minute videos. Sponsor a, sponsor a video night, sponsor a film festival. Okay, how about a film festival? How is Agenda 21 impacting Portsmouth? How is Agenda 21 impacting Manchester? What does it look like in Manchester? $250 reward, a $250 prize for the top five minute video from the university or from the junior college or from the high school. Get the kids involved so they recognize that they are being manipulated. Make it a game with young children. 
help them understand that they are actually being burdened with this feeling that they are, that they have the power to destroy the planet and the power to save it. Look at that. Look at the kind of pressure that puts on a child. You want to meet others who are being stripped of their rights. Go to your planning department meetings. Go to your council meetings. Go to your supervisory meetings. Go there. Stand. I don't care if you don't know the guy. Stand up and speak for him. This man is having his property regulated out from under him, and I want to let him know that I stand with him. This is wrong. You go and partner with other towns. How about all the towns in New Hampshire who are ICLEI members? Get together in a coalition to kick ICLEI out and go as a body, each one of you, to your town, whatever town that is. Everybody go to Nashua this week. Everybody go to Portsmouth next week, right? Everyone go together and you keep them there all night and you make them tell you why they are members. And we have done that, it's very powerful. You're gonna video it, bring your video people with you because there's nothing more shocking to an American than seeing their elected officials ignoring you and ignoring the truth and actually not even speaking. You get up there and you're eloquent and you lay it all out and then they say, thank you, next. Make them responsible. Support those elected officials that support us and oppose those who do not. Take them out. Join with other groups. You know what? I may be a liberal Democrat and you may not, but this is an American issue. We want to break that red, blue, left, right paradigm. Break that gridlock. It terrifies those in power. At the top, there are no parties. This is a nonpartisan power movement. It is a power grab to destroy our sovereignty. No American wants to live without their rights. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. Democrats own property too. We need to work together. So, there's no heroes, there's nobody on the sidelines. We're all in this together. We all work together. We are all over the United States. We have a huge nation. We don't know what's going on in the next town. We don't realize, because it's not in our media, that there is a huge groundswell, a huge grassroots movement fighting this all across our country. And you are part of that now. Our duty now, our civic duty, is to get up, stand up, speak out, and stop this. We will call a halt to this. We are calling a halt to this as free Americans. And I invite you to join me and do this right now. And we can do it. Let's do it. Actually, um, you're going to find this. Of course, uh, I'm contacted all the time by people in Australia, in New Zealand, in Canada, in England, primarily because those are English-speaking countries, and you know, um, but also people all across the world who are fighting this, who are recognizing it, um, and who are working together. It's a, it, you know, the movement is growing. Just in the last year, I've seen a tremendous increase in people who are becoming aware. As soon as you become aware, it's like someone said to me, he said, it's like watching a magician do a trick, right? Once you've seen how that trick is done, you can never go back to being fooled again. And those of us who recognize it and see it in our communities, in our towns, our cities, our counties, our states, are spreading this information. So yes, there is a growing movement all across the world. Go ahead. Uh, first, I want to comment on your, uh, on the person that said you had a black helicopter. <laughs> black helicopter. Because it's, it's not because of what you're saying, it's because you're saying it, that someone's got a helicopter. <laughs> and the other thing I want to mention is that uh, the plan for all of this, it very much sounds like it was not 
40 years ago, but actually in 1948 when George Orwell wrote 1984, mm -hmm. because what you're saying is exactly what's in 1984. Yes, and that's right. What he's saying is that, uh, you know, this is 1984. I'll tell you something interesting. Um, George Orwell wrote 1984, and, uh, and Aldous Huxley wrote Brave New World. I don't know if you've read that recently. That's a good one to read. Because, and Aldous Huxley sent a letter. I guess George Orwell sent his book, 1984, to Aldous Huxley, and he said, you know, he invited him to read it, right? And Aldous Huxley did read it, and he sent back a letter to George Orwell, which I just read. And he said, uh, he said hey, you know, this is a great book, but I think it's going to look a lot more like my book because people are um, easier to control when they are happy, when they think that the plan is their plan, when they are, you know, and you remember from Brave New World how everyone was on this, you know, you could take a, a drug, you know, your little Soma or whatever it was, and you could zone out for 18 hours, and, and everyone, you know, was trained and conditioned from childhood to be happy that their life was the way it was, and you're getting this kind of conditioning. So I completely agree with you. I do see this as 1984 combined with Brave New World. We're in Brave New World right now, but we're going to get to them. Oh, yeah. But, you know, see, this is, I, and, you know, I mean, hey, what we're looking at right now is, is exactly uh, the plan, you know, is to restrict our movement, our ability to use our resources and our land and ownership. Because think about it, if you're in a city, first of all, if you're in a big city, you're not growing your food. I don't care about this little movement they're having, you know, where you can grow something on your balcony, for crying out loud, where you're going to get one carrot. You know, so I mean, pe these are people who don't know anything about agriculture, right? You're dependent on good soil, you know, plenty of sun, and cheap water. So, okay, you can play all the games you want with your chicken in your yard, but we're talking about real major production of food. They are creating scarcity. This is about creating scarcity and about creating dependence on government. So when you're living in a city, and you are told that, there is, that we're destroying the land around us and that there's no more free land, you don't know what's going on in the interior of the United States. You don't know that there's literally thousands of miles of nothing. Thousands of miles of cultivated land. When you fly over this country, you're looking down at farms. That's what you're looking at. So, yes, you pack people into the city, you give them a lousy education where they don't know what's going on. Do you know there's something called rethinking mathematics? Oi, listen to this. Re I'm a math person, right? Rethinking mathematics. I don't, you know, when you're a child, everybody has kind of uncertainty sometimes in their life. Math is fabulous because it is always the same answer every single time you do it. And you know when you're right and when you're wrong. How could you not love math, right? But rethinking mathematics is being taught in third grade. And it's being taught to children that, oh, you don't think two and two should be four? Well, let's listen to your point of view. I'm not kidding. Rethinking mathematics. Yeah, question? Yes. Yes, I'll be speaking in the New Hampshire legislature, and I'm very much looking forward to that. I think you'll have a lot of uh, warmth and success with them. Uh, I hope so. Where is that? I'd like to... Uh, it's I'd Monday, like, this Monday. I'd like to know what kind of success you've had uh, up to date uh, uh, getting the legislator's uh, attention. Uh-huh. And uh, my second question would be, um, what has been the reception of you uh, with regards to national parties, uh, do you feel uh, Republicans are more receptive or Democrats are more receptive? Mm -hmm. Who's more receptive, the Democrats or the Republicans? Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, and I'll answer your, your second question first. Um, right after the Republican National Committee came out with their resolution to, uh, you know, to repudiate Agenda 21 and, uh, and ICLEI, I, uh, I was you know, quite happy to see that, and I sent it along to the Democratic Central Committee, national, and I said, you know, as a Democrat, I, I'm, you know, I'm eager to find, you know, to, to encourage you to issue, you know, a similar resolution, right? 
And they sent me back an email uh, asking me for $3 for Obama's campaign. <laughs> So, uh, no, I, I, in fact, have been attacked by Democrats. Uh, I, in fact, in Virginia, the Democratic Central Committee in Virginia said that I wasn't really a Democrat, that I was a fake Democrat, and that I was uh, misleading people purposely, and, uh, and uh, they, what did they say about me? Yes, that I was uh, unscrupulous. Yeah. So, um, and your first question was what, you know, whether I, you know, how I'm going to do with legislators, I have met with a lot of elected officials. And I would say that um, this is part of our duty and our job, is to meet with our elected officials and assist them in understanding what's going on. Because you know they don't have time, they don't understand, they may not know what's going on. And that's part of what we do as, as Americans, as, as the electorate, right? So um, I have you know, had many, many elected officials now read my book really like my book and have it change their point of view about this because people think of this as a marginal fringe issue. It is not. It, that is the, that's the public relations scam. But what we're seeing now is that that paradigm's been broken. Though that is so yesterday, you know. And we are really talking about something that is in every single town, county, and state in the U.S. So this is something we are making, we are breaking through, we are making inroads as Americans with our legislators. We're saying you're either with us or you're out. And uh, in Alabama, that is SB 477, Due Process for Property Rights Act. It says no infringement. You know, I mean, goodness sakes, do you, can you believe we need a law that says no infringement on property rights without policy, with policies that are traceable to Agenda 21? No money to or from organizations that are named or have anything to do with Agenda 21. I mean, we need a law for that, but I guess so. So, in Alabama, that was signed into law by the governor, and we want to see that all across the nation, and then we want to enforce it. That's what we want, because you can have your city, let's say Nashua says, okay, we're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll kick Ickley out, we won't sign on next year, we're not, it's an annual thing. We'll just let our membership go. No, no, that is not good enough. Now you gotta go through your general plan, your comprehensive plan, and purge it of all of these principles and go back to 1970 or something. That's the only way you're gonna do this because you've got have to be vigilant and move through, you know, move through all your laws. We've got one city in California that's gone back to 1913 and they're going through all their laws from 1913 forward and pulling out anything that contradicts the United States Constitution. And that is what we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Let me give you this one, Jack. Thanks. Maybe for that, though. Okay, well, let's see. It's attached to me. It's attached to well, me. Just I can, you know what, I, I don't need that. I'll actually just stand beside you, stand beside Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm like all connected. First of all, I want to I wanna absolutely thank, that was wonderful. Was that not on the phone? Yeah. Now, the other thing I, I did want to let all of you know, that Rose's book is here. I, I, I expect all of you to walk out with one. Because yeah. it's critically important they that you have it. Tell them they have to pay for it. Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> They're for sale. They're for sale. Here you go. But, and I think these folks, here we go. Let me spin this on here. Don't go away, Rosa. That's my mic, not the mic. Yes, but that's what you want. Is this thing working? Oh, this is, oh sorry. Wait a second. You no, you need this mic one. Oh. That, that one was your mic. This is the other one. <laughs> All right. No, it's okay. fine. Okay, there we go. Here we go. I don't really but the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the, Granite State, the Granite State Patriots Liberty Pack has sponsored Rose of Survival here. It was Rick and Mary that did this for us. She's the uh, Rick and Mary Hubbard. And uh, we do have uh, the need for some uh, contributions if you'll help us out with the expenses and so forth before you leave you can you can uh, gsbl pack it's you can do that right at the desk when you leave uh but i thought it would be good rosa brought up the point that uh 
the RNC uh, had already put forth a resolution exposing United Nations Agenda 21. I have it. We have some other copies here 